This is AQA A-Level Chemistry. It's a required practical question and it's based on RPA2. I'm going to recommend you pause, have a go and then review your answer. So let's take a look at the question. Here it is in its entirety, parts A through to D. And when you're ready, let's take a look at the answers. So we have got here five grams of potassium chloride added to 50 grams of water initially at 20 degrees Celsius. The mixture was stirred, potassium chloride dissolved, temperature of the solution decreased. What steps would you take to determine an accurate minimum temperature not influenced by heat from the surroundings? Now, this is very familiar to you, I am sure, but we normally do this in a slightly different way. Very often, you will take the temperature before the reaction takes place for three minutes, add the solid on the fourth minute, and then take the readings. This does not have those initial minutes. It's simply telling you our initial temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. But what you are going to do is make sure that when you add the potassium chloride, you start the stop clock immediately. Once you've started the stop clock, you then read the temperature every 30 seconds. You're going to do that until all of the KCl has fully dissolved at the very least. And generally, you're going to go beyond that because in this case, because it's an endothermic reaction, you are going to have a heating curve or line that you're going to extrapolate backwards. Once you've done that, you plot your graph of temperature against time and extrapolate that curve or line back to zero seconds and read the temperature. Let's see what that looks like in practice. So your graph is here. You have your initial temperature of 20. Your temperature starts to go down at 30 seconds. At a minute, it's gone down further. Then it starts to go back up. Now we're interested in this trend. Because if I extrapolate back, this allows us to assume what the temperature would have gone down to if no heat had been gained from the surroundings and all of the reaction had taken place instantaneously. So that allows us to calculate delta T. Let's move back to the question, part B. And we have got here a Q is MC delta T question. I've color coded so we can see where these numbers have come from. Remember, the heat capacity of water will always be given. The temperature change has been provided up here, I've highlighted in purple. The mass is the mass of the surroundings. We're interested in the fact we're heating up 50 grams of water, not the fact that we used five grams of potassium chloride. With all of that in mind, it takes us to 1128.6 joules. We actually want the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole of potassium chloride. So, my moles of KCl, well, I've got 5 grams of it, and I can work out that its MR is 74.6, simply by adding the atomic masses together. I do that, and I get to 0.067 moles. So I know that I got 1128.6 joules from 0.0067 moles. A couple of things I need to do here. I need to convert my joules into kilojoules, dividing by 1,000. Once I've got my kilojoules, I divide by my number of moles, 0.067, and that takes me to an answer of plus 16.8 kilojoules per mole. Moving on to part C, the enthalpy of solution of calcium chloride is provided. Enthalpies of hydration are provided for calcium ions and chloride ions. And you are asked to calculate the lattice enthalpy of dissociation of calcium chloride. So you need to know really the definitions of enthalpy of solution, enthalpy of hydration, and enthalpy of lattice dissociation. That will allow you to write this equation the one we're interested in. Lattice dissociation, one mole of solid ionic compound broken down into its gaseous ions. I also need to know that enthalpy of solution is where I fully dissolve one mole of solid ionic compound. So they become aqueous. And enthalpy of hydration is when one mole of gaseous ions becomes one mole of aqueous ions. Now I can put the figures in, I know that this is negative 82.9, that's been provided, and I know that my enthalpies of hydration are, for calcium, negative 1650, as provided, for chloride, because there are two moles of it, I'm doing two times that amount, two times negative 364. I can now substitute those figures in, looking at my two roots. 
negative 8 to 2.9 equals x, take 2, 3, 7, 8, rearranging to make x the subject, and that takes me to a value of 2295.1. That should be negative 2295.1. Moving on to part D, explain why the answer to part C is different from lattice enthalpy of dissociation for magnesium chloride. Well, for this one, what's important is that the magnesium ion is smaller than the calcium ion. And because of that, there is a more strong, a stronger attraction to the negative ion. So there are your two marks there. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.